With COVID-19 ravaging the United States in the wake of Thanksgiving, it seems like a good time to take a step back and consider what has worked and what hasn't when it comes to handling this pandemic. The United States as a whole has experienced over 15 million cases, leaving 291,000 Americans dead. To put that grisly number into perspective, that means one out of every 1,126 Americans who were alive at the beginning of the year have died to COVID-19. Though the whole world has been shaken by COVID, the US has gotten it worse than most. Comparing to Germany, all the way across the Atlantic will make this point clear. One out of every 3,942 Germans have died from this virus, which, though really not ideal, is still far better than the US. So is that the answer? Be more German? Well, before you get out the bread and beer and sausage, let me uh, direct you to an enclave that has been even more successful with handling COVID-19 than Deutschland, Vermont. These green hills and The Green Mountain State is presently in a better position with COVID-19 than any other state in the continental US. The dead in Vermont are presently one out of every 7,012, making VT the least deadly place to live for COVID we've looked at so far. So what separates Vermont from the rest of the country? What may first come to mind is Vermont's rural nature. Vermont has only 68 people per square mile, which is quite low. By comparison, New York State has 413 people per square mile. And before you go chalking up that larger number to the inclusion of New York City, you should also know that states like Massachusetts and Connecticut also tower over Vermont with their population density, with 884 and 737 people per square mile, respectively. Even New Hampshire, Vermont's backwards twin, has more than twice the population density of Vermont. So, is that it? Fewer people packed together makes everything hunky-dory? Well, not quite. As a whole, the U.S. has a population density of 94 people per square mile, which is pretty low, but that hasn't saved us from having one of the worst COVID situations of any industrialized country around the globe. Germany, which, as aforementioned, has had much more success in handling the virus, has a population density of 623 people per square mile which makes a good case that density of people is not everything when it comes to a pandemic. This point can even be seen without needing to reference countries other than the US. In recent weeks, we've seen stark increases in COVID cases across the country, with dangerous increases appearing even in extremely rural states like Montana. Montana has a population density nine times smaller than that of Vermont, yet as of December 11th, Montana is still sporting four times as many COVID cases per 100,000 people. Even Alaska, the crowning jewel of American rurality with under two people per square mile, is still facing as much COVID per 100K as Montana and Vermont combined. Surely Vermont's rural position helped, but clearly that is not all that's going on. So what gives? To understand how Vermont got where it is now, we need to look at what the Green Mountain State did at the beginning of the pandemic. One factor which sets Vermont apart from many states is the initiative it took early on. Mid-March, Vermont closed down schools and, like many other states, implemented a stay-at-home order on March 24th, catching the beginnings of the first wave. One month later, Vermont was in the midst of a downswing of cases, which would last until June. Though originally, Vermont only recommended to use masks, presently Vermont maintains a mask mandate. Another important factor to consider is how Vermont has implemented travel restrictions, which were recently strengthened due to the crashing of the second wave. Many of these tools were used to some extent in many other states across the country, so I mean, what, what makes Vermont so different here? Vermont's administration has been very inclined towards implementing health measures as strongly as can be done to ensure public safety. This is even more impressive considering that tourism makes 8% of Vermont's economy, meaning that with the intense travel restrictions required for public health, Vermont risks losing out on a big portion of its yearly profit. This sacrifice reflects a core principle of Vermont's response to COVID-19. The economy can only be opened as much as public safety allows. The end goal is not just a bolstering economy, but a healthy state. 
as of December 11th, this approach has been paying off well, with Vermont having the fewest number of cases per 100,000 of the entirety of the continental United States. I think the country as a whole might benefit from paying a bit less attention to what stock prices are saying and a bit more attention to keeping Americans healthy. Perhaps the rest of the states will be able to better get this virus in check by learning from Vermont's example. I'm looking at you, Florida. Though restrictions have been essential for public safety, there certainly have been some serious downward effects on the economy. In normal years, Vermont holds a remarkably low unemployment rate of around 3.1%, over one percentage point below that of the U.S. as a whole. Unfortunately, that changed drastically once COVID hit. In April, Vermont reached an unemployment rate of 16.5%, almost two percentage points worse than the rest of the country. Fortunately, this uh, grim comparison would not last, and by June, Vermont had reached an unemployment rate of 9.4%, over one percentage point lower than the rest of the country again. Even if Vermont can shine in comparison, that 9.4 is still far from ideal. Things haven't been easy, and even still, they may get worse before they get better, but eventually, this will end. For now, though, I wish you all a happy holidays and good night. Stay safe out there, folks. And to all of her sons and daughters, may they be strong and forever free.